spiritual substance that's found only in Christ Jesus. The substance is that we're giving a place for a gathering for His presence to come and connect with real people, with real problems and situations on a real journey that just have a sincere heart to move along and get to know God better. That's what church life is about. We are now church building a relevant, creative church, empowering people to reach others. Not just empowered for yourself, but empowered to go love somebody that was unlovable. It was unlovable. Thousands of people have come onto this property, into this auditorium, and have experienced a life-changing touch from God. But we believe that our best days are still ahead of us, not behind us. In order to keep doing that, you, know, you can't rest on what you've accomplished. Why are we still looking for the best days? Because we're not enthralled with our past as much as we are captivated by our future. Now church has never been stronger, more focused, more united around our common mission, vision, and values. By God's grace, we are healthy and we're poised for the future. Oh, wait. 
saved at the sound of Jesus' name. Come on, you sing it. Sing it out. Do you believe it this morning, church? Lives made whole, hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name. Sing it again. Come on. Chains will fall, prison shake at the sound.
my father say this is my child are you his child today i hear the voice of my father say this is my child you say you say you say what's he calling you say that's who you are and just say, Jesus, it's in you that I find freedom. And I thank you for your power and your presence and your spirit. And I worship you in this moment. Come on, those hands are still lifted high. Begin to worship him now. Come on, begin to worship him all over the building. Lift your voices now, yeah. Lift your worship, lift your worship, yeah. Thank you for freedom, Lord. Thank you for freedom, Jesus. Oh, yeah. Just stay in that atmosphere. I'm so mindful of the privilege it is for us to be able to come in these doors and have fun in His presence and exalt Him and to be able to worship Him without fear and without shame. Come on, the name of Jesus is to be exalted. Come on, the name of Jesus is to be lifted high. No shame in our worship, God. And with all the division and all the things that we know are happening around us, some of the stuff in our nation, I thank God for the power of the church. I'm gonna say that again. I thank God for the power of the church. So we like the lights and we like the sound and we like to have the fun. But I believe when we begin to worship and we begin to prophesy, we can speak things to a region. Come on, we can cause change in the atmosphere. So we ask you, Holy Spirit, to let your presence fall in this place. And not just this room, but let there be an overflow to this region and to this entire nation, God. I want kingdom 
We need Jesus. We need our God to move in this nation more than ever. I love what Pastor Lindsay was saying about the church. You know, the Bible says, and this comes up in my spirit as soon as he said that, the Bible says that we will be called repairers of the breach, restorers, those that bridge the gap, those that bring unity. How good, how pleasant it is for brothers and sisters to dwell together in unity, for it's like the anointing oil poured upon the head of the priesthood. God is moving, he wants to move, he wants to change us and shift us. Listen, the blessing of America has never been about our perfection. It's always been about the the fact that we have the freedom to worship our God and draw on his presence and power. Maybe some of you, uh, I got an alert yesterday from uh, West Chew News, and it did not put a smile on my face. This was an advertisement from the official city of Orlando on Friday to advertise their fireworks celebration this week. And this is what they said in their advertisement to try to get you to come to fireworks. Quote, a lot of people probably don't wanna celebrate our nation right now and we can't blame them. When there's so much division, hate and unrest, why on earth would you want to have a party celebrating any of it? But in all seriousness, you know in your heart, Fourth of July fireworks are amazing. Yesterday they had to issue a retraction because they heard from thousands and thousands of people who said, what in the world are you doing? What in the world are you saying about our country? This is their statement after the backlash from yesterday. The city of Orlando sincerely regrets the negative impact our words have had on some in our community. We understand these words offended some of our residents, which was not our intent. We value the freedoms we have in this country and are thankful to the men and women who fought and continue to fight for those. We take pride in celebrating the 4th of July to express our gratitude to those men and women and honor the country we live in. When you double down because of political opportunism, you miss the point. Winston Churchill said this. He said, democracy is the worst form of government except for every other form that's ever been tried. Today we stand free to worship our God in the freedom of Jesus Christ. In many nations, you can't do it. And that's one of the freedoms we cherish. Would you lift your hands right now as we pray for America? Father, thank you. God, shed your grace upon this nation. America, the beautiful. Father, move from sea to shining sea and shift us and change us. Let the church of Jesus rise up as a prophetic voice of unity and call out those that try to divide us. Lord, we release your presence and your healing power. For you said, if your people who would, who would start called by your name would humble ourselves and, and seek your face and turn from our wicked ways, then you would hear from heaven, you would forgive our sin, and you would heal our land. Father, would you heal our land of the divisions, yes, of the racism, yes, yes. of all the agitation yes, of darkness out there trying to feed into the narrative of darkness. Today we lift up Jesus over our nation and we proclaim the blood of Jesus over this nation. A blood washed America that sets us free. And you said whom the Son sets free is free. We pray for revival in our nation. We pray for an awakening, a move of the Spirit of God to change us and shake us up and wake us up from our deception. Holy Spirit, Come and move in this church and in this community from from Gainesville to the villages, from Crystal River to Daytona Beach and everything in this, this North Central Florida region. Come and move in Ocala and shift us into freedom mode in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on and celebrate him right now. Put your hands together, Jesus. There is power in your name. There's power in your blood. There's power in your word. Woo!
Well, turn on green at least three or four people you didn't come to church with. Come on. Well, we want to welcome you to Now Church. So glad that you're here today. Listen, um, I should have said right at that moment, some of you first service people introduced yourself to the second service people because you didn't even know you went to the same church till today. <laughs> so that's a great thing when we come together. And uh, man, I, I wish we could do this for all of July or something and come together like this because this is great to be together. This is the summer months. This is the uh, dog days of summer as they call them. And it's a great thing to see all of your lovely faces and see everybody come together. Uh, we got some great things going on. We like to tell you about a segment we call In the Know, which is stuff that happened this past week. First thing we had was uh, the youth went bowling this week. They had a great bowling. They, they wanted to strike out on their own <laughs> in their spare time and uh, hang around a couple alleys and stay out of the gutter. That was the goal. That was the goal. Thank you. That was unrehearsed. Anyway, thank you very much. Thank you. Anyway, I'm not sure my, my, my grandchildren will like it. That's the most important thing. It doesn't matter what you think. Anyway, so they had a blast. They had a great time. We are preparing to redo and reboot all of children's church, youth ministry, and young adult ministry over the next few months. When we get back to school, we're going to have great strategic plans. We're about to send Pastor Tristan, hopefully, to a conference in the next few weeks. Uh, just seeing what, you know, part of what's going on church-wide, worldwide in the body of Christ is reaching that next generation. And that's been the hardest thing coming out of COVID for not just us, but for everybody. So we're super excited about what's coming and get ready, stay tuned. The other thing is this week, in case you didn't see it on social media or when you're walking in the door, but we have the foundation poured. The slab is there. <clears throat> the slab is there. It is exciting. We were invited to a party the other night at 2 a.m. Uh, thank God for Florida workers. These guys came out and worked from 2 a.m. until daylight, till probably 8 or 9 in the morning, and they got the whole thing. We watched them pour the footers with this giant crane and uh, there, was a, there were a line of dump trucks. The reason why they had to do it in the middle of the night, because they had to, had to close 441. Because we had a parade of dump trucks lined up one after the other, ready to pour concrete. Somebody asked how many yards we used. I just said we used the whole front yard of the church. I don't even know <laughs> what the measurement was, but it is, uh, it's looking great out there. And in the next few weeks, God willing, we're going to see iron come up out of the ground and show you how tall and nice and big that new building's going to be and how awesome that uh, our little breezeway there is going to become uh, just a nice courtyard. And we're planning on doing some outside things out there, outside little concerts, Bible studies, classes, different things. We'll tell you more about it in the next few weeks, but it's really exciting. Also, we celebrate what here... here uh, what we call a three-week challenge. That is come to church, come to now church three weeks in a row and see what God does in your life. We believe if you give him something consistently to work with, that God will move in your life and you'll see a shift and a change inside of you. And finally, we want to welcome you uh, and say if you're newer to now church, please stop by the Welcome Center on the way out. It's that little table out there. There's a little gift bag out there with some really cool gifts. We have a lot of little goodies and little things we put together from time to time. Please stop by out there and get that on your way out. And boy, do I miss Pastor Chris. <laughs> anyway, Pastor Chris is finishing his vacation. Isn't he finishing this week? Thank you. <clears throat> anyway, anyway, today we begin a brand new series for the month of July. And it is, we're calling it ready. I got to be very careful because the last few weeks, Facebook has censured us and blocked us from our, our live feed and kept our stuff off until Wednesday nights, from Sunday morning to Wednesday nights, because of the videos we showed that were not copywritten and they were not trademarked. 
And yet they're, 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 they're trying to censure churches for every little thing. <clears throat> so I'm calling this, I gotta be careful because Michael Buffer has a trademark on the actual slogan, which I will not say. But some of you have those little robot vacuum cleaners. So let's call it ready to Roomba. In case, in case Facebook wants to, yeah, mess with us. Anyway, here we go. Exodus chapter 17 is where we're gonna begin in the Old Testament, <clears throat> pardon me, and 2 Corinthians chapter two. In the New Testament, Exodus 17 verse eight says this, now Amalek came and fought with Israel in Rephidim. And Moses said to Joshua, choose us some men and go fight. Go out and fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron and Hur, before the pronouns, went up to the top of the hill. Three people got that joke, anyway. <clears throat> Hur was a hymn. Anyway. <clears throat> and Hur wasn't she. Hur wasn't they. Her was him, or he. <clears throat> That's my barista at Starbucks had on their name tag. Verse 11, and so it was when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands became heavy. You ever tried to hold your hands up for more than five minutes or more than 30 seconds? It's hard to do. Moses held his hand up, but they became heavy. So they took a stone and they put it under him and he sat on it. And Aaron and Hur supported his hands, one on one side, the other on the other side, and his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. So Joshua defeated Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword the prevailing prayer empowered the sword. The prevailing prayer empowered the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Finally, 2 Corinthians chapter two says this in verse 10. <clears throat> Pardon me. Now whom you forgive anything, I also forgive. This is the context. For if indeed I have forgiven anything, I have forgiven that one for your sakes in the presence of Christ. Verse 11, here it is. Lest Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Let's pray one more time. Father, what we need in this world and what we need as your people is your word, your spirit, igniting revelation knowledge inside of us. Speak to us a now word, a fresh word that changes us and shifts us from where we've been to where you want us to be. In Jesus' name, open the eyes of our heart and give us knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. In Jesus' name, amen. Right now, in case you haven't noticed it, there's a clashing in the invisible realm. There's a battle raging in the spirit right now all around us between the angelic forces of God and the demonic hordes of hell and the soul of America is at stake. Millions of people hang in the balance in what happens in the next couple of years in our nation. I don't think I'm overstating that fact. The last few years have been filled with a series of breakthroughs and setbacks. Breakthroughs and setbacks. Every time God has intervened with his mighty power, it seems like the forces of hell, the forces of darkness have tried to swoop in and snatch the victory out of it. Often when you have a breakthrough in one area of your life, the enemy tries to ambush you while you're celebrating like a sudden scorpion sting while you're having a party. And this is exactly what happened in the story of the unprovoked attack of the Amalekites 
against the children of Israel in the resulting battle. Rephidim was the place where the newly freed people of God crossed over went to the waters of Meribah and had bitter waters. They got to the next place in the desert and in this outpost in the desert, suddenly they had no water. And the people began to cry out immediately and blame their leaders, blame the people and get mad at God. Every time they got under pressure, they turned against Moses. And Moses sought God for a strategy. He said, what do I do? We're in the desert now. I don't see an oasis, but you said you'd provide for this people. What are you going to do? And God said, don't be afraid. Find the rock and strike it with the rod of God. And when he did, water came gushing out. Now, unless you have um, a wrong picture in your brain, this is kind of what my picture in my brain was this that, the, that the, the rock was there and water came out and the people lined up and they each came up and got a little drink out of the fountain and they went on. But if you read the full account of the scriptures, that's not what happened at all. And I didn't even realize it. I just, I just kind of never really thought through it. This is three, approximately three million people going through the desert And the Bible says that they didn't stand in line to get a little drink and fill up their Yeti cups. This was a breakthrough of monumental proportion. When he struck the rock, a river of water came out of the rock. And not only that, the New Testament says that the rock went with them through the desert. That the river flowed everywhere they walked There's the river in a desert. This is what Isaiah prophesied in Isaiah 43 about the past and the future when he said, God will make rivers in your desert. He's already done it once in this point. I'll prove to you from scripture in a moment. But when he struck the rock, we're reminded in the New Testament that that rock was Christ, a pre-incarnate encounter with Christ before his name was Jesus, showing that Jesus, the Son of God, would have to be struck by the rod of God at the cross to pour himself out for everyone. Not a few people to get a little drink, but the fountain of forgiveness and cleansing for all people whosoever will believe. At the cross, Jesus poured himself out to save, to refresh, and to strengthen all of his people, just like he did them. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 3, from the message, describes it this way about the Old Testament. It says, and they all ate and drank identical food and drink, meals provided daily by God, manna. They drank from the rock, God's fountain for them that stayed with them wherever they were, and that rock was Christ. The rock was portable, not just potable. Only the teachers of English get that joke. Talk about a breakthrough. And suddenly the storyline changes. If it were a movie, This would be the moment where you'd hear the music shift from light and joyful to ominous and heavy. Because the Bible says that once they all got their drink, now Amalek came and fought with Israel in Rephidim. The word Amalek means literally in Hebrew, valley dweller, or those who live in the low places or low lifes. Amalek was part of the family of Esau. And here it was a cousin, a cousin nation attacking the children of Israel right when they're getting a breakthrough of monumental proportions. At the height of their emotional lift and refreshing or revival of themselves, 
The descendants of Esau attacked the descendants of Jacob for no reason except fear and jealousy. My friends, whether you know it or not, the devil tries to take advantage of every opportunity to thwart God's people, to stop to stop something before it can get started. The Bible says in Revelation that while the woman travailed with child, the serpent was waiting for the birth of the baby. The enemy wants to hit everything in its infancy, anything as it starts, because if he doesn't, it snowballs and breaks his neck and crushes his head. He was trying to nip it in the bud, these people coming out of darkness and coming out of slavery of 400 years and into freedom. One mighty man of God broke down 2 Corinthians 2.11 recently, word from word, word for word, from the original Greek language. Remember, the context here is about forgiveness versus unforgiveness, which is don't be ignorant of the devil's devices because many times he'll use unforgiveness in your life against someone else, even justified and rationalized, though it may be to, to take you down or to keep you out of your promised land. But the principle has no limitations. So I want to quote kind of this word study and what the end of 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11 means. He writes, To the degree that we are ignorant of the ways our adversary thinks and operates, of his plans, plots, schemes, and devices, to that degree he will gain on us, prey on us, defraud us of what is ours and have or hold the greater portion. We got Wimbledon going on this week. When you tie, it's called deuce. When you prepare for game point, set point, or match point at deuce, it's called advantage. And the advantage is taken hold by the one who understands what's going on. Ignorance is never really bliss. For decades, many in the church of Jesus have apparently taken to the belief that, quote, if we ignore the devil, he'll leave us alone, end of quote. Apparently, they mistakenly thought we could experience peace by practicing detente with the enemy. Now, detente is an old word that most of you probably don't know, but in the 70s, the the presidential Nixon administration made peace with the Russians and the Chinese and called it detente. It literally means a reducing of tensions. But can I tell you that detente was the result or the the cause of both World War I and World War II because detente is also known as appeasement, that you give the enemy enough to where you think he's satisfied and and you back away thinking he'll leave you alone. And the devil will never leave you alone because you, the moment you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, you became a threat to the powers of darkness. That very moment, your life shifted and you became something greater and and found the purpose for God in your life. You have a divine purpose and a destiny and the enemy hates it. In fact, the Bible says that the devil is a fallen angel who used to be a worship leader, the worship leader of heaven. And now he's been reduced to sentence to be, to be crawling upon the earth and to be sentenced to an eternity in hell. And you and I have become the worship leaders. So one, my old pastor used to say, the devil's mad because he, he's an ex-employee of heaven who got mad because you took his job. Understand, it never works well to back away from confrontation in the hope that you'll find peace. In a frightening passage of scripture, God speaks to man's free will and power to choose In Hosea 4, 6, God tells us why we're destroyed. God tells us why we perish too young, too early. Hosea 4, 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because you have rejected knowledge. The ostrich disease, burying your head in the sand, never avails anything good. 
especially when God has called you and I to be watchmen on the wall. We're the intercessors. We're the prayer warriors. We're the ones called to make a difference because we do see the invisible. We do feel it. We do sense it. We do understand it. We can't play let's pretend la, 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 la. Everything's good in America. La, 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 la. Oh, isn't it great? We stand as the only agent with the power of the Holy Spirit that stops darkness from overtaking this world. What a position we have and why, uh, that's why we have to know the truth from the error. We have to know the truth. We have to love the truth. We have to love the word of God. We have, to, we, have to, we have to pursue God. We have to seek his face. I say it this way. Denial is more than a river in Egypt. When you're going through something, you have to be willing to face the key questions and the key issues. In some churches, the men or the husbands are known as being those who just pretend that problems will just kind of solve themselves and let's kick the can down the road and let's pretend. Not in this church, but in other churches, I hear that men would rather try to find a way not to deal with what's really going on. But some of the key questions we have to ask ourselves and face at this pivotal prophetic time in history, and even in your own life, think of it as an individual. What is at the root of this problem? What do I need to change about my current direction in order to move forward again? See, take it individually, then we can also answer it corporately. This is what the Bible calls repentance. A change of heart and a change of mind that is followed up by a change of direction. And I say this to you on this 4th of July celebration 2022, it's time to regain the upper hand. It's time to take the advantage. Advantage, church. Not advantage, devil. Advantage church, take the advantage back by asking for God's revelation knowledge. Here's how we defeat Amalek. Here's how you defeat the attacks of Satan in your life when you're in the midst of a breakthrough or you're about to get a breakthrough or you just got a breakthrough and you felt like this should be feeling better, you should be doing better, you should be going forward and suddenly the Bible says along came Amalek. By the way, also God pronounced a, a, an eternal curse on Amalek at this point. Though Joshua and the children of Israel won that battle, God said in that day, one day someone will come in, among the children of Israel and utterly destroy the, even the sight or the memory of the tribe of Amalek. When God was wanting to be the king of the people of Israel, they demanded an earthly king, if you'll remember, and they got a guy named Saul who looked really good. He was handsome, he was tall, um, he, he, he looked good on the outside. He was, he was the perfect king externally. But in the very first thing God gave him to do, God said, I want you to be the one to utterly destroy Amalek. And Saul apparently didn't read the scriptures. He didn't go to find out what all that meant because on the day that they overcame them and overthrew them. He let the king of Amalek live and he let a lot of the choice uh, sacrifices live only to say to Samuel, well, I did it so I could sacrifice more appropriately. And Samuel said, because you didn't understand what you were supposed to do and carry it out, 
you're going to lose the kingdom today. And God will appoint another. And another came along named David. Thank God for David. Amen. Understand that this unprovoked attack was something more to God. And it's something more to God when you get hit blindsided. When you're, when you're prevailing or you're winning or you finally get a breakthrough you've been believing for, you've been thirsty for God and now the thirst is quenched and you finally get a breakthrough and the enemy comes along to hit you from the blind side, God takes it seriously on your behalf as well. But here's some strategies on defeating Amalek and then I'm done. Number one, Moses went to the top of the hill. In fact, 24 hours before it, Moses said, this time tomorrow, I'm going to the top of the hill. In other words, he premeditated, he planned, I'm going to go spend time with God in the high places. I'm going to go pray. I'm going to find a vantage point. Listen, how many times do we find Jesus walking at the seashore or walking in the mountains to pray and spend time with his father? And thankfully, 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 by the providence and wisdom and strategy of God, he didn't go alone. Moses took some helpers. He took his key associates with him, Aaron and a guy named Her. <laughs> Fill in your own joke. <clears throat> so Moses took a new position. Number two, Moses took a new position to watch and pray. He, he showed us. He was watching what was going on. He could see what was going on in the, in the field, on the battlefield. He could see it. He took a high place. He took a vantage point. He got a, he got a perspective of what's going on. And then he began to lift up his authority. He lifted up the rod of God. He lifted up that rod, the symbol of his spiritual authority, and he interceded. We might call it warfare prayer. That's what we believe in around here. There are moments when we call it fifth gear prayer. Sometimes, you know, for, if first gear is the blessing of the food and second gear is now I lay me down to sleep, fifth gear is ha! It is praying with groanings that cannot be uttered in man's language. While his hands were up, I remind you, Joshua and Israel were winning the fight in the natural. They were battling, they were prevailing, they were winning, they were cutting down the enemy left and right. But when tiredness hit, as it hits everybody, all of us, all leaders, all humans, all people, when tiredness hit, his hands fell down. And Amalek began to, began to win. That's why we do special things like our summer holidays when we do one combined service at 10 a.m. It's for a reason. Because you can get so worn out. You know the early days of now church when we were spirit life back in the beginning days? We had church on Sunday morning. We had church on Sunday night, six o'clock. We had uh, service on Tuesday night at seven or 7.15 we used to do. We had prayer meeting every Friday night. And that went on, that schedule went on for approximately 12 years. First 12 years of the church. And suddenly I woke up one day and I wasn't 29 anymore. 12 years after we started the church, I woke up at 41 and said, wait a second, there's gotta be a better way than this. I'm getting exhausted here. I think we're driving the people. We need to make sure there's freedom. Make sure there's space. Some people will say, well, I, I want to come to church more. That's awesome. We want you to want more. That's why we're not having Wednesday night services for the month of July. Give people a break. Give people a rest. A lot of people on vacation anyway. It's called being strategic. Listen, when the, hand, when the hands fall, the devil is winning. Remember when Elijah ran from Jezebel and the angel Lord came and, 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 and gave him some angel food cake, remember that? Gave him cake and then gave him a nap, right? My, my pastor Steve Kelly says, take a break and eat some cake. Sometimes that's what you need. That's July, except it's ice cream month, so, you know, do that. 
<laughs> Brother Fred is over there, it's a hallelujah, it's ice cream month. I know, I know Pastor Tristan, he, 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 like, he likes ice cream even in winter, but he will devour some ice cream in July, I promise you. Amen. Seeking whom he may devour. Anyway, no, no, no. That's, no, that's the enemy. That's not God. Let me ask you this. How's the momentum in your current battle? What are you facing in your life? And are you willing to face and confront the actual issues? And are you willing to face the fact that you may need to change? You may need to repent. Or you're just going to keep denying it. Well, it's, it's going to get better. I just believe it all works out for good. Well, it does all work out for good for those who love God and those who are the called according to his purpose. How's the momentum in your current battle? Are you tired? Feeling worn out? Or exhausted? This is why we need to be together as the body of Christ with each other. Aaron and her were a type of the helpers, a type of help from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is called our helper. Our God is a present help in time of trouble. My friend, the next point is this, the tide turned when the helpers propped up Moses' hands. Aaron and her noticed a pattern and went into action. Wait a second, every time his hands fall, we're losing. We need to get those hands up. We need to lift the hands of our leader and, and, and prop him up if we have to. We need to sit him down on a rock and prop him up. And the Bible says, until the going down of the sun, they kept his hands up. And when they did, they prevailed. Ironically, Rephidim in the Hebrew literally means support. Support. It was the place of support. It was the place of help. How many know where two shall agree on earth as touching anything they ask? It shall be done by our Father which is in heaven. And so I say, part of the victory is this. At this moment, you need to be doing one of two things no matter what battle you're facing. You need to be doing one of two things. Number one, get help if you're Moses. Number two, be a helper if you're Aaron or her. Either get help or be a helper. Well, I'm, my life is going fine right now, Pastor. I'm not really in a battle, so I'm just, just trying to pretend like everything's fine for everybody else. No, you don't understand. The, 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 the invisible realm is raging right now. No matter what's happening with you, you can have a great day. You can, have a, you can have a great day or you can have a, a hellstorm day, but you've got to get to the place where you're not reacting to that. You need to get help or be a helper because the battle isn't primarily in what you see or what you feel. It's in the invisible realm. And you have to pull yourself up to be a watchman on the hill, to be a watchman on the wall, and to lift those hands and to lift that rod of authority. The battle isn't primarily what you see or feel. It's in the invisible realm. The invisible realm is more real than what you see or what you feel. Please, open your eyes, open your heart. Let God work with you. Be an instrument of the Holy Spirit, a vessel of honor and a vessel of God because the battle is raging. And the only way we lose is if we ignore the problem and give the devil the advantage. The only way we lose is if we quit. We gotta stop treating the symptoms of what's going on in the world and deal with the root causes by the help of the Holy Spirit. Be a helper. Finally this. Freedom is never free. Someone has to pay the price to go up and pray. And someone has to go to the battlefield of confrontation with the enemy. It took Moses, Aaron, and her to do their part, and it took Joshua to do his part with the children of Israel to conquer Amalek. My friends, Jesus is our Joshua. In fact, if you know the Hebrew name for Jesus, that Jesus is the Greek word, the, the Gentile word, but our Savior in Hebrew, his name is Joshua, Yeshua. 
Yeshua. Jesus is our Joshua. His name in Hebrew, Yeshua or Hosea. They all kind of come from the same thing. Jesus paid the ultimate price to set you free from every attack of the enemy. Demons have no power over Jesus. But you and I have got to get back to the mountains, get back to watching on the wall, watching, watching, and praying. What's our takeaway? Let's get ready to, by getting humble, so we don't stumble, bumble, fumble, jumble, or take a tumble. Get ready to Roomba. On this holiday weekend, the greatest explosion won't happen in the sky as fireworks displayed all, all over our area. The greatest explosion is about to happen right now when one person opens their heart to the living God, crosses from death to life, and the angels in heaven stop everything they're doing to have a party. Would you bow your head and close your eyes? Let's pray together. Father, I thank you that we are not ignorant of the enemy's devices. And we choose to climb the mountain. We, we choose to get to the top of the hill with you, with your presence. And we choose prevailing prayer. We choose to trust in you, our God, no matter how everything looks, no matter how everything looks in the natural, no matter what's happening in our nation. We thank you that your power and your might are real and true. Holy Spirit, right now, we ask you to move in this place. And everyone connecting with us in our online campus, we say this is the day when your eyes are opened. This is the day when your heart comes alive. This is the day of revival, the day of breakthrough, the day where the water of God comes from his rock, and that rock is Christ. With your heads bowed and your eyes closed, no one looked around for just a moment. Maybe you're here today and you've never known Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. You've never really made that jump from hope, believing that there's a God, but to faith, knowing that Jesus is that Son of God who loves you more than life itself. He loves you more than you know. He loves you more than you love yourself. He wants better for you than you want for yourself. And his plan is better. Or maybe you've come here today and you've been, we'll address this more next week, but maybe you've been in compromise. Maybe you're, maybe you're one of those people who likes to keep kind of one foot in the theology of worldliness and one foot in the theology of, of the word of God. You wanna, you wanna play both sides depending on what group of friends you're with. My friends, I'm telling you, God is saying, this is not the time to blend in. This is the time we have to stand out by standing up. There is a fresh anointing coming upon the body of Christ. And I believe this summer is a strategic part of what God wants to do for these next few years. And part of, is it, part of it is that we align ourselves with what God is saying, with what God is doing, and pull ourselves back away from everything the world is screaming about. We keep our eyes on the master. Maybe you've been trying to play both sides. Uh, today, it, this is really strong in my spirit. As Elijah stood on the mountainside to challenge the prophets of Baal to a duel. He called the children of Israel, the people of God together for a corporate meeting and he said this, if the Lord is God, then serve him with everything you've got. And if he's not, if you think Baal is God, if you think Jezebel is a goddess, then by all means, go serve them and see what you get on the other side. But the God of power, 
the God of love, the God of mercy, the God of might, the God of faithfulness, the God of strength is rising in this hour for whosoever will believe and invite him in. This is the moment to quit playing games. If you're here today and you say, I need Jesus in my life in a brand new way, I'm just gonna say it like I got it. Stand up where you are. If you want me to pray for you, you wanna give your life to Jesus, stand up and be counted where you are. If you wanna come out of that backslidden condition and playing games with God, stand up wherever you are. If you wanna quit being on, you know, they, they say if, you, if, you, if, if a person has one foot on a boat and one foot on a dock, eventually he's gonna to have to make a decision. Because otherwise that boat in the water is gonna float away, you're gonna end up being a banana split. This is the moment, I'm gonna pray for you I'm gonna pray for you at home and anybody else. Quit playing games. Quit trying to pretend for mama and daddy. Quit trying to play, play the game when you come to church. This is about reality. This is the moment where you make your stand. Are you gonna play on God's team? Or are you gonna keep going the ways of darkness? Stand up if you wanna live for God in that way, in a brand new way right now. Father, I pray for every person who's standing, every person whose hand is raised or standing in their homes right now, or in that hotel room right now, I come against every lie of the enemy. And I pray that today, that this revelation, that they would pass from death to life. Lord, today, your word says that when one person truly crosses over from that, that unregenerated part and that unregenerated humanity of sinful flesh, into a supernatural being indwelt by the Holy Spirit that all of heaven rejoices. Today, Father, we thank you for those who are making the stand and we pray for them. We surround them with your precious blood and we pray for their minds and their thoughts and their dreams and their future. And we pray that you reveal Jesus to them in greater measure and in greater way. We pray for the next new generation rising. We pray that you would raise them up, that you would strengthen them, and let us be a church that empowers them without shame or fear. Those of you standing and everyone around them and everyone at home, say this out loud right where you are. Just say, Jesus, I want you in my life. Come and fill me now with your Holy Spirit. Change me. Help me to move forward again. I want to live for you but I need your presence and I need your power and I need your word. Come and fill me now. Help me to be a prayer warrior, to make a difference with my faith. In Jesus' name, I proclaim the battle is the Lord's and because it is, I win in Jesus, amen. Amen. Everybody get up on your feet and praise God. Come on and praise God. Come on and praise Him, somebody. Come on and shout. Come on and celebrate. This is, there's a party in heaven right now over those five or six people that stood right there and the ones at home that you don't even see. Come on, praise Him. Jesus, we live for you. We love you. Woo! Praise God. Praise God. Aren't you glad you came to church on 4th of July? Go ahead and take your seat one more time. We're gonna receive our tithes and offerings real quick. Pastor Tristan's got some announcements. Ushers, if you get ready, we're gonna receive our tithes and offerings. If you need an envelope right now, we're trying to make giving easy around here. And so we have an envelope for you if you wanna give by cash or check. Um, many of you give electronically. I think we're over, I think, I think we just found that we're over 80% of our giving is electronic now. But now we want people to still feel engaged in the offering. So we have these little I gave cards it's, it's on the honor system. If you want one, you just ask for one. Say, I, I give electronically. I'm going to give or I did give. Anyway, it is exciting to come together. This is, my friends, this is the greatest day to be alive. Do you know that the Bible says the Old Testament saints would have given anything to be in this moment because we're living under grace. We're living, the battle is raging but we win. We are at the dawning of a new day of history. 
We're closer to the coming of Jesus than we've ever been. And I'm telling you, it's such a joy to serve him and to honor him. The Bible says in Proverbs 3, 9, honor the Lord with your possessions, with the first fruits of all your increase. In that way, so as your barns will be filled with plenty, your vats will overflow with new wine. We say around here, life works best when God is first. The word first means top, premier, prime time. First in time, order, and importance. Father, today we seek you first. And we know everything we need will be added unto us. And we love you, Father. Thank you for building your church. Not just the building, but building the people. Lord, we pray for the next new generation that you give us strategic wisdom that we find out your heart and help your people to find rest in the midst of our busy lives, to find the peace that passes understanding that's not just about what's going on in the world, but the peace that's going on in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for giving. Amen. Aren't you glad you came to church this morning? Don't you feel better than when you came in? Man, God is in this place, in this house. As you're giving today, we've got a couple announcements. As Pastor Richard just announced, uh, during his message Wednesday nights, we are having the month off uh, for our midweek service. Uh, so enjoy time together. Enjoy time with God. Enjoy time uh, vacationing and enjoying your summer break, right? It's good to vacate. The Bible talks a lot about Sabbath, so this is just a great way, and like he said, very strategic. And also, uh, we'll see you next Sunday, but also follow us on social media uh, for updates, for calendar things, and also just for general information. So make sure you follow us on Facebook, on Instagram, and also check out our website. And if you don't, you should be on there watching us anyway. Also, uh, for those of you who have come into this church... And you were, you just come in, you're like, man, I love what God is doing in me. I've taken the three-week challenge, or this is my first week, and God is doing something in me, and I want more. I want to know what the next step is. I want to know what the next level is. Well, we have something called liftoff here, and that's our getting on point for the church. And in the very back, Nancy, are you back there? She's hid, She's hiding behind all those big ushers back there. But on your way out, she will be taking signups because in two weeks, we're going to be doing something called pre-liftoff uh, or liftoff. And we, that's your getting on point, the way that you know more about the church, how you get involved in the church, and also how you can grow in your spiritual journey. And I'm just telling you, it's life-changing. It's powerful. And we want to encourage you to be a part of that. Pastor Richard. Sorry, I just had a, we just had a quick elders meeting. <laughs> They like my suggestion that for the month of July, that we do one 10 o'clock service for all the, th the three remaining Sundays of July. Yes. Is that all right? That's good? We're texting back and forth. Yes. Well, we got to get the word out. We got to let you know. I guess for the month of July, well, no, no, I'm not guessing. <laughs> it's a Holy Spirit led decision. Yeah, we're gonna have part. We'll this party. is so fun. Yeah, we'll party. I'll make sure I got stuff. We there you go. We'll have celebrate. a Holy Ghost party, we'll 10 a.m. Yes. The next three Sundays. You hear that band and singers? You, you know, <laughs> our band, our singers, our team, our now crew, our ushers, all these guys running cameras and sound and lights, they give and give and give and give all year long. And they come up here. Sometimes, what time? What time does your team meet? Well, we get here seven fifteen. Seven fifteen. I'm just, I'm, I'm just finally getting the first cup of coffee at seven fifteen. This is a big thing for all of our volunteers and for everybody. But I think we're going to go ahead and, and let's do this. Let's do it. All in favor, say aye. Ah, we don't vote anyway. Anyway, ten o'clock next Sunday morning. We'll see at ten o'clock. Yes. A combined service the next few weeks of July. Why wait till next summer to start it? Let's do it now. Shoes. Bring your dancing Bring your dance shoes. shoes. We're going to have a great time. God bless you. Have a great week, awesome. everybody. Stand up on your feet. If you want to sign up for liftoff, please see Nancy in the back. We want to uh, get to know you more. God bless everyone. Have a great Sunday. Thank you.
Thanks for joining us at Now Church. For the latest updates, visit us at nowchurch.com, including live or on-demand video, event registration, online giving, and much more. And don't forget to follow Now Church on our social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And please use the hashtag NowChurch. Thank you.